In the prologue of John's Gospel, which we heard proclaimed on Christmas Day at the Mass during the day, we were reminded that Christ Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light that illumines everything. He is the light of the human race. He is the light that illumines the world such that the darkness cannot overcome the light. And the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ signals the fact that the superabundant light has come into the world. And this light allows us to see the beauty and the, with clarity, the beauty and the truth and the meaning and the purpose behind everything, especially those profound mysteries that sort of remained hidden. In light of Christ, they are now clear and we're able to see the genius and the beauty of why God has created things a certain way and why they are the way they are. Well, today we see one of the most obvious things that we probably take for granted, illuminated with the superabundant light of Christ. And what is that reality? The family. The family is something that many of us take for granted. Many of us, if not all of us, belong to some family of some sort. And it's something that we just say, oh, it's a family. But today, we're given an opportunity to not only reflect on the family, but to truly see the wonder and the dignity and the profound meaning and purpose that God designed in allowing there to be families and how it's truly God's will that people be brought up in families. And we see this how? Because we are celebrating today the feast of the holy family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And so through that family, we are able to see the wonder and the dignity of the family by looking at the fam holy family. Now, even before we get to the holy family, I think it's important to point out that even from the very beginning, as we heard in the first reading today from the book of Genesis, with the story of Abraham and how Abraham, our father in faith, was given the promise of how he was told to go outside and look at the stars and see the very thing that he was longing for in his heart and how God would fulfill that promise of having him have offspring as many as the stars, something that he didn't actually possess. As we hear in the book, letter to the Hebrews, he had it by faith. He had it by faith. But we see how that blessing that God promised to Abraham, as Pope Francis points out in Amoris Laetitia, the apostolic exhortation on the family, that blessing is fulfilled by God and runs by God through the family from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob through David, all those names of the Old Testament, the blessing comes and walks through the family. And we reach sort of the high point today with the holy family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And what a wonder that we see in the holy family. And so what do we learn about the family as we look at Jesus, Mary, and Joseph? Well, it's amazing that God the, the Son, the eternal Word, became incarnate in a human family. He subjected himself to a human family. He made himself vulnerable to mere mortals. Imagine that, the eternal Word, the one through whom all things were made, God in the flesh. He truly became one of us in little baby Jesus, who we celebrate at Christmas, and by the way, it's still Christmas. So please don't turn off your Christmas hymns. Don't throw away your Christmas tree yet. This is only day three, plenty of days to go. Sometimes it kind of drives me nuts. They were playing Christmas songs all the way through Advent and then 26 December, boom, they're done. And you're like, wait, we just began Christmas. It's been Advent all along, now this is Christmas. So please don't throw away your Christmas trees yet, right? Anyways, just a nice little side note. But imagine that. Jesus became incarnate in a family, and he made himself vulnerable to a family, to mere mortals, to Joseph and Mary. Now, Mary, of course, is immaculately conceived. She was given that grace of being freed from original sin from the moment of her conception so that she could give the flesh to Jesus. But other than that, she's human, just like Joseph, a normal human being, the eternal word, the God-man, made himself vulnerable to those human beings. 
He made himself dependent on them. They would feed him. They would educate him. They would teach him. They would even protect him. They would change his diapers. I don't know if they had diapers in those years, but you know what I mean. They would do that for him. Amazing. The God-man made himself vulnerable to mere mortals. This speaks volumes about what God thinks of the family, what God thinks of moms and dads united in holy matrimony and being mothers and fathers of a child. It's truly amazing. God honors and respects the family, and he's showing us this in the holy family. Jesus is the one who perfectly fulfills that fourth commandment, honor your father and mother. He does so perfectly, even though he's God. And you can imagine, we even see a little window of this when Jesus goes missing on that trip that they would do, the annual trip to Jerusalem. We read that in the book of Luke. That'll be the next gospel after the one we heard today. And they made their trip to Jerusalem. And then on their way back, they hung out with all their relatives and friends. And Mary and Joseph assumed Jesus was with his relatives. But after a day of walking back, they realize he's not there. And then they find him in the temple after three days. And when they do, Jesus asks his parents, why are you looking for me? Did you know that I had to be in my father's house? And then right after that, it says Jesus was obedient to his family and he grew in wisdom, almost the same as we heard today in the gospel. But we see a little window there of the fact that Jesus knows who he is. He knows he's the eternal son of God. And yet he makes himself vulnerable, dependent, obedient to human parents. Brothers and sisters, how about us, especially teens and kids? I know sometimes as we are growing up, when we're young boys and young girls, mom and dad are everything at the young age, right? Whatever they say is like gospel truth. But we get to a certain age, I don't know, maybe middle school, and all of a sudden mom and dad aren't so cool anymore. And mom and dad, no matter what they say, it's just like, whatever, right? <laughs> Imagine this. Jesus was obedient to his human parents, even though he was God. Think of that gap between divinity and humanness. Jesus Christ, who is divine, was basically subject to, obedient, vulnerable, dependent on human parents who were frail. His mom and dad did not even understand what he meant. It says that in the gospel, they pondered what it meant because he was like, speaking something they didn't understand, and yet he was obedient to them. How about you and me, puny little human beings who are not even smarter than our own parents, who are not even wiser than our own parents? The, the lesson there, we really ought to honor our mothers and fathers, even if they're weak, even if they say silly things, even if they don't necessarily do what we like all the time. We really ought to honor our mother and father and strive to be obedient to them. Jesus is showing us a beautiful example there. The, the Holy Family is a model of what the family looks like, right? Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. The Catechism tells us, in Catechism 2202, a man and a woman united in marriage, together with their children, form a family, just like the Holy Family. A man and a woman united in marriage, together with their children, form a family. The Catechism says this institution is prior to any recognition by public authority. So that means the government does not need to declare a family to be a family. A family is. It's, it's there prior to the state. It's there precisely because God ordains it that way. When a husband and a wife are married and they have children and in the holy family, you notice that Joseph was not the biological father of Jesus, but he was the legal father of Jesus. So even in our own family, sometimes I know families that don't have biological children, they adopt, they are really a family. And the Bible is basically telling us this, and the catechism is basically telling us the same thing. And then it says, public authorities have an obligation to recognize the family precisely because it's so precious and so special. It is the basic unit of society. It's the place where human beings learn how to be human beings, where we learn how to love and be loved. As a matter of fact, the family is a school of love. And love, at the end of the day, is all about me giving a gift of self. 
sacrificing myself. That is why Father Stan Fortuner, in his famous song, he often says the words family, F-A-M-I-L-Y, stand for forget about me, I love you. It's all about the other. Forget about me, I love you. Maybe as you enter into your own families, if you take that attitude and disposition in the family to say, you know what, it's not about me. What can I do for my brother and my sister? What can I do for my mom or my dad? If I'm a parent, what can I do for my spouse and my children? Forget about me, I love you. The family is a school of love, a place where love is made manifest through the messes, through the ups and the downs, through the fights, through the disappointments, it's still a beautiful school of love. And we see these same kind of things happening even with the Holy Family, right? Now, the family is also so special because it actually images the Trinity. It's a communion of persons, just like the Trinity. In the Holy Trinity, God the Father is distinct from God the Son, is distinct from the Holy Spirit, yet they are one and they are radically equal. The Father, eternally, forever, without beginning or end, pours himself out in love. The Son, eternally, forever, without beginning or end, receives love and then pours that back love back to the Father. And then that love that is being exchanged between Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son, as we say in the Creed. The family, in some way, images that, in, although in an imperfect way. You have a husband and a wife, or a mother and a father. They are not the same. They are distinct. The husband offers himself in love to the wife, and the wife reciprocates, offering themselves up in love to the, to the husband. They come together, and proceeding from their love, offspring, children. Can you see that? A family, in a certain sense, even reflects the most holy trinity. It's a school of love. It's a gift. We learn here, my dear brothers and sisters, with this mystery of the most holy family, that the family is not just an accident. It's not just the end of evolution or something that just happens by chance. It's by God's design. It's by God's design that we have families. And so my brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this feast of holy family, may we pray for our families. May we stay together with our families. And even if we come from broken families or families that have difficulties, we can pray to the Lord and strive that we can do well to serve our families and to allow those families as best they can to be truly places of love, places where we can come to know one another and to know God in a very special way. In closing, I just wanted to point this out. In our gospel today, this is now for the parents, we see how Mary and Joseph take Jesus to the temple to present him. And you really get the sense when Mary and Joseph are there and Simeon takes the baby into his hands and starts saying all these things about Jesus, and it says, the parents marveled at what they heard said about their son by Simeon. You really get the sense that Mary and Joseph, even though this child is their child, he's not really their child like theirs, theirs, as if it's like his, their personal property. He's their child, but it's almost as if their parenthood is done on behalf of God. The child ultimately belongs to God. I mean, that's Jesus, right? He has a mission that he's sent here to do by God, right? And the parents are there almost on behalf of God to help him along the way to form him, to protect him, to teach him, so that he can accomplish that mission in a perfect way that God has basically has for him. And in a very real way, I think that's, that's the same it is for us. You know, moms and dads, yeah, the children are your children, but not like your children as in mine, my precious, you know, not like that, right? They are your children, but they really ultimately belong to God. And the parent's duty is to raise and educate and form those children to set them up such that they can faithfully accomplish whatever it is that God desires for them at the end of the day so that they may flourish and truly be who God calls them to be. In a sense, that's what we even learn from the Holy Family today. May Jesus, Mary, and Joseph pray for us, pray for our families, keep us together, and allow us to truly be united in love, and that one day we'll be united with the Holy Family together 
and in heaven forever. Praise be Jesus Christ.